Hello everyone, welcome to the Packet Injection 101 presentation. In this presentation, I will run you through what packet injection is and how to programmatically inject packets into the network. Moving on, what is packet injection? Now before going further, I would like to point out that the raw socket tutorial which we have discussed before is a prerequisite for this packet injection tutorial. If you haven't gone through it, please go through it before trudging into this topic. Getting back to the question, what is packet injection? Well, simply put, packet injection is a technique by which a programmer can construct arbitrary packets in memory and inject them into the network. When we say arbitrary, what I actually mean is that we have absolute control over the various headers the Ethernet IP, uh, the Ethernet header, the IP header, TCP, UDP, all these headers are totally in our control and we can fill in whatever values we want into these and send them out onto the network. Additionally, of course, let's say you're experimenting into making your own new protocol, then packet injection gives you the power to absolutely bypass the kernel and place packets onto the networks as is. So even for new protocol designers, the packet injection technique comes in to be very handy. Now, basically when we talk about packet injection, there are two approaches. Let's first look at the first approach. Uh, in this approach, what we do is that we first separately create each of the headers and then put them together. So now, let's go systematically step by step. The first step is creation of the raw socket itself. As we remember, this is done via socket call to pf underscore packet soc underscore raw and then the protocol itself which you want to add. Now in this approach what we do is first we create the ethernet header. After that we go ahead and create the IP header. Then the TCP header and then finally we create the data. We will look into how we create these individual headers a little later but let's try to focus on the big picture now. So once all these individual headers and data has been created, we put all of these together, the ethernet header, then after that the IP header, then the TCP header and then the data. This is as we know the sequence in which a packet is formed and the packet headers are put. After this is done, we send out the packet through the raw socket which we created. So summarizing approach one, what we do is first we go ahead and create the raw socket. Then we create each of these headers separately in memory, Ethernet, IP, TCP and then data. This could also have been UDP for that matter. Then we basically concatenate all these headers one after the other in order. That is Ethernet, then IP, then TCP and then UDP. And then finally send this packet out onto the network. This is the first technique. The second technique is creating a raw socket, then creating a buffer for the packet itself. So in this case what we do is that we take a large enough buffer, let's say we want to create a packet of size 1500 bytes, then we create a packet buffer of size 1500. Then for the first 14 bytes we go ahead and create the ethernet header in this buffer itself. So we are actually using the same memory location and basically creating the headers. Then we go ahead after that and create the IP header. That would be the next 20 bytes, assuming that there are no options field in the IP header. After that we create the TCP header and then finally the rest we put in whatever data we want to send to. And then we send this out through the raw socket which we created in the first step. So as you can see the difference between both these approaches is that in the first approach we created all the headers separately and then put them together in order to make a packet and then send that packet out. In the second approach, we created a packet buffer and then into various positions of the packet buffer, depending upon which header we are trying to create, we added those specific values. Now to keep things simple, in the tutorial I will be following approach 1 in which I will create all the headers separately and then put them together. There is no right or wrong approach. Both of these are equally good and will work. 
there is some amount of trade off here and there as far as the amount of computation or the amount of memory which is being created because in the first case as you can see that we are creating all these different headers separately and then creating a large enough memory space to hold them and then copying these headers individually to that memory space so the amount of memory per packet required is double the size of the packet one for all the headers separately and one for the whole packet itself where we copy each one of these here of course we choose a large enough packet buffer and then create the individual headers in that packet buffer itself so the amount of memory is just equal to the size of the packet anyways moving on let's look at the ethernet header as we already know first we have the destination host then the source host both of which are 6 bytes in length and then for 2 bytes we have the ethernet type which would be ip or arp or whatever and then after that the data inside let's say if it's ip then this would be the ip header then the tcp header or data if it's arp then it would be arp based information so on and so forth so now the question is how does this header look programmatically programmatically it's defined in if underscore ether dot h and this is how it looks simple enough we've already encountered this header in the sniffer tutorial this is just a recapitulation of that so when we create an ethernet header we basically initialize a memory space of type eth hdr and then fill in the appropriate values that is fill in the appropriate fields in this eth hdr structure with whatever destination address source address or protocol we want the packet to have similarly this is how the ip header looks and this is the struct ip header as defined in linux ip.h right as you can see i have actually ripped it from ip.h so there is a define for little edn and then after that the big edn so as you can well understand we've already described this network byte order is big edn so first version and then ihl and then type of service so as you can see clearly in case of big edn we have version first and then ihl next and in the case of little edn it's just reversed anyway we'll come into all these things when we do the programming exercises the bigger picture here is suggesting that this is how an ip header looks like and we at least need to fill up all these fields in order to send out the ip packet similarly this is how the tcp header looks like source port first destination port sequence number acknowledgement number the flags window checksum etc and this is how it maps on to a data structure defined in tcp.h once again we have encountered this in the sniffer tutorial this is just a recapitulation so let the games begin now and let's move on to programming exercises before finishing on this presentation let me just once again try and summarize how we create and inject a packet so first of all we create a raw socket and then after that we manufacture each one of the headers ethernet tcp ip etc then put them all together in order that is ethernet first ip next tcp next and then finally the data and once we have this entire packet in place we write it to the raw socket which sends it out to the network so we'll see uh, we'll actually be demonstrating creation of all these packets using raw sockets in the coming videos thank you